to those who persecute me, for I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink, O oh, my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O oh, Lord, have mercy.
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be seated as we collect our walk.
captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and found him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, you also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them standing and warming himself. <coughs> the high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, What I said is wrong. Bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. <coughs> now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, you also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it. And at once a rooster crowed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing hymn 450 and 450, <coughs> verses 1 to 4.
Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own Lord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth <coughs> listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside in uh, went back outside to the Jews and told them. I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a rock. This is the word of the Lord.
Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt of him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release Jesus. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a, at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So Pilate delivered Jesus over to them to be crucified. Sing him 450, beginning at verse 5.
Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, <laughs> They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The fire will sing for us.
I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. For these 
things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him who they have pierced. <coughs> After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of Jesus. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. This ends our passion reading. Thanks be to God. The fire will sing for us. <clears throat>
of the puzzle that we have to find. There's nothing to be added or subtracted or multiplied or divided. It is finished. The redemption price is paid. The world's sin is atoned for. The work of reconciliation, of peacemaking is accomplished. The law is fulfilled. So Paul writes, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's as if Paul is saying, it is finished. <coughs> Jesus, though, came not to abolish the Torah, that's the first five books of Moses, the law of God. He did not come to abolish the prophets and their words and commands, but rather he came and lived and died to fulfill them. So his entire life, from the womb to the grave, is in fact one Big fulfillment. Every word and work of his happened in order to fulfill the scriptures. We heard that over and over as I read Luke's, or John's gospel. He said this to fulfill the scripture which said. It's all over there. He came as the ransom, redeeming us from the slavery of sin and death, held captive by the law that declares, the law that says to us, each and every one of you, the soul that sins shall die. And yet he came as the substitute sacrifice. The Passover by whose blood came the freedom, the sin offering whose blood poured out, there came the atonement, and by his death we have life. He came as a king, as a priest, <coughs> as a victim, fulfilling every picture type that the Old Testament could have used to point all of God's people in the Old Testament to this one event this day. It is finished. At the moment these words were spoken, the curtain in the temple separated the Holy of Holies, that place where only one guy could go in once a year. That curtain was torn open from top to bottom, and that signifies the end of the Old Covenant and Temple, the end of all the sacrifice and cults, the end of the gradation, that is, how holy you can or cannot be, and kept God and man apart. The gap of holiness from a holy God to a sinful human has been bridged. God and man were brought together and reconciled once and for all. The barrier is put in place to protect a holy God were now torn into two, ripped open by the death of the Son of God and His cleansing blood. The book of Hebrews says this, for it is fitting that he, that is Jesus, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. Jesus' suffering is our perfection. Jesus says in Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, he says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is, is perfect. Jesus said this as he was talking about the law of God. But how can sinful man be perfect? How can you and I Steeped in Adam's sin and the desire to sin daily, even our own sin, how can we ever claim that <coughs> sort of heavenly perfection that God requires? 
Well, here with the simple word of fulfillment from the cross, Jesus declares the perfection that makes us perfect. Here is where you must look this Good Friday to find how you are perfect. It's not in yourself. Because he's not finished with you yet. You must look solely to Christ Jesus, the dying man on the cross, who is your perfection. He kept the law perfectly for you, in your place, down to the last stroke of the law's pen, down to the tiniest nuance of its commandments. In thought, in word, in deed, and in intent, Christ kept it perfectly. He perfectly loved God with his whole heart, soul, and strength. He perfectly loved his neighbor as himself, and that included you. <laughs> all people. And he did all of these things in order that he might give his perfection to us. Freely as a gift so that we might be perfected in Jesus. So if you remember nothing this Good Friday, remember that Jesus is your perfection. So this was the joy set before Jesus. This was the reason that he endured the cross and the scour scourging and the scorn and its shame. He, he can declare before heaven and he can declare before earth that his mission is accomplished. That the plan from all eternity to undo the deceits of the devil and the death of Adam is now finished. As far as the sin and death of the first Adam went corrupt, that corrupted all of humanity, <coughs> and, he, and Jesus takes that and he throws it as far as the east is from the west. It is truly finished. We do not add anything to this word in fulfillment. Not with our prayers, not with our petitions, not with our religious sentiments. You know, these things that we do add nothing to what he alone has finished. And yet we are prone even to do that. The world of religion is built sinking quicksand. <clears throat> the notion that God has not done enough and that we must add to and finish what Jesus only started. Many, many religions operate that way. Or, more insidiously, a common belief held in our world that God has done his part now you must do yours. Faith and works. Christ plus something more. These are all recipes for heresy and disaster. What God in the flesh has finished, let no man <coughs> add to it. All we can do is trust, receive, delight, enjoy this gift freely given. So in one sense, it is finished with you. You as you are in Christ, united with Jesus through baptism in his death, and his life, you are also finished. You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians.
in Christ, in Jesus, it is finished also for you. But then again, in another sense, it is not yet finished. Not as at least our eyes can see. Not as our senses can yet feel. Because you remain in this mortal body. You are still part of this old and fallen creation. You are still a natural born child of Adam. And the things you want to do, and the things you don't want to do, the things you uh, the things that you don't do also, those wind up being the very things that you do. When you try to do good, evil seems to lie just around the corner. <coughs> Would we cry out with Paul, wretched man that I am? It's from Romans 7. And we, <coughs> as Paul is, we would be correct. And so we are caught in this paradox, this tension of the now, here, and the not yet, of being sinners in ourselves, and yet we are perfectly perfected saints in Christ. And there is this tension, and there's also a daily repentance, a daily dying to the old self in Adam, and a daily rising to the new self in Christ. And for that, Jesus says, it is finished. And you know what? Jesus says that <coughs> over you in death. It happened at your death in baptism. Where you died to sin to arise to life in Jesus. It is finished, he says it to you again in the words of absolution that recall you to that baptism and that cover you anew. It is finished, he says, as he gives to you his body and his blood, confirming once again that his complete work of salvation is for you. So remember this word of fulfillment in the hour then when you are tempted to add to Christ's complete work. When you doubt in your salvation or when you really struggle with your sins. <coughs> remember this word as you gaze into the mirror of God's holy law reflecting back all of your sins that caused the Savior to die on the cross. And remember these words, because Jesus speaks them to you also at your deathbed. There he reminds you, it is finished. It's already done for you. Recall this word on this Good Friday. Man's creation day and his redemption day. It is finished. And it is very good. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guide our hearts and minds in the one true faith. Even into life everlasting. Amen. We're going to sing a cappella. The <coughs> hymn that we sang throughout the land, it's in 422. It's too dark for you to read. You probably should have it memorized by now. <laughs> in 422. <coughs> On my heart.
your final reading from, uh, from this or for this Good Friday from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52 through 53. So hundreds of years before the Lord Jesus was even born, Isaiah records for us his passion and death. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up, and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so barred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they will see. And that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one for whom men hid their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he should be cut off of the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge, Shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. What have you to say in response to this, dear friends in Christ? It is true, he was fierce for our transgressions. He paid our punishment, and died the death we deserve. But he is our Savior, and by his holy cross we have been you are right. Your <coughs> salvation is found in these words. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. 